Join me on this yacht tour and stick around as the chief engineer takes us through the engine room of this impressive boat. Fitted with a smart hydro jet propulsion system, this boat is capable of speeds reaching 40 knots, allowing its owner to spend less time in transit and more time exploring and relaxing at sea. This boat has a very unique layout, one that is perfect for darting around areas such as the Med for weekend escapes, exploring hidden coves and soaking up the best of the Mediterranean lifestyle. So before I show you around this really intriguing boat, let's not forget she's powered by three engines and she's a jet drive. Please don't forget to give the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This stunning San Lorenzo was built exclusively for the owner of San Lorenzo, featuring high-end upgrades such as ASEA shore power converters, SCR exhaust treatment, world-class galley equipment, and as you'll see, much more. Built in 2022, she measures 33.84 meters in length with an 8.2 meter beam and an impressively shallow draft of just 1.3 meters allowing her to get much closer to shore than other boats of a similar size. She offers accommodation for up to five guests across four cabins and has a crew of five. With her three 2000 horsepower MAN engines, this boat has an impressive cruising speed. She can maintain 27 knots as you dart along the coast, overtaking the vast majority of other boats that might be heading to the same anchorage as you for some sundowners. One thing's for sure, you probably won't be at the back of the queue when it comes to getting that prime spot in your favorite marina. And if you are in the market for a boat like this one, well, at the time of making and uploading this video to my YouTube channel, she is currently listed for sale with West Nautical. So of course, over on the port side, we have a lounging area and what a place to sit and check out the view for those massive windows, both on the starboard side and over on the port side as well. And if I back up here, you see on this huge bulkhead, there is actually a TV hidden in there as well. So if you're coming on board and you want to catch up with some sport, what a great place to sit and watch your favorite team. But it's a really unique layout down here. It's not a layout that I've seen before, but I absolutely love it. And the way that this particular part of the boat connects with the exterior as well. Uh, it really, really is a nice touch. Of course, over here on the stern, you've got some more seating on that side as well. And I'll take you up to the next level in a second, but first we're gonna check out the guest accommodation. Over here on the right-hand side, we have a bar, everything you need, look, to keep your friends and family nicely entertained. Again, three large windows, on that bulkhead as well. So we are obviously tied up stern two at the moment, but you can imagine when you're not, when you're out to anchor, you get a great view out of those huge windows. But right, let's move forward into the guest accommodation. First off, we're gonna head over onto the port side cabin. As you can see, a nice spacious cabin in here, uh, really, really well laid out. Two big portholes over there on that bulkhead and of course you've got a seating area down here as well. And the other thing as well, if you want it completely black in here, completely blacked out, then these shutters do close as well. The chief engineer was showing me, as I had a look around earlier on, find the right button. There you go, look at that. One press, and within a few seconds they're shut, and everything in here completely blacked out. And here's the controls. Over here, you just press that, quickly spin around, and there they are, open again. And the other good thing as well, you can open these up for some additional ventilation in here as well. And you might notice you've got the privacy glass. So if you do wanna have these shutters open when you're in here, you still do get privacy, which is obviously very, very important. I like the fact as well, we can walk either side of the bed and I'll show you over here the amount of USB connections that you've got. You've got a couple down there, look. You can plug in something else into that. PowerPoint, and of course you've got the same over on this side as well. 
Right, let's spin around. I'll take you into the ensuite. Again, nice spacious size ensuite in here. Big old shower over there, look, with a rain head again. Another portal in here. So not only you get a natural light, you can obviously open it up and get some ventilation. Nice decent sized sink there as well, look. Some towels underneath. Give you a standard Royal Navy salute in the mirror. And I open this up. First and foremost, check out the thickness of that door. I mean, that is like a watertight door that you'd find on the upper deck. That's probably about, what, three inches thick. But yeah, in here we have the toilet, obviously. But yeah, that is a big door, big heavy door. Let's shut that back up. Let's walk back through here. And I'll take you into the other cabin on the opposite side. Again, similar layout in this cabin is what we've got on the port side cabin as well. Plenty of headroom in here. I would say it's probably about just under seven foot of headroom. Don't quote me on that, it's just a guess. Uh, and obviously we've got two portholes over there. Absolutely love this light feature, check that out. And back up and show you again, another seating area over here. So when you get up in the morning with your coffee, you've got somewhere to sit and work out what you're gonna do for the day. And of course, you've got another ensuite through here as well. Again, toilet over there, and a big sink, and the big shower. Again, another rainhead shower. And another theme that you find throughout this boat is with all the tours, just how thick they are. Right, let's move back out into the passageway. I'll just quickly show you as well the indirect lighting underneath the bed. Okay, let's move forward. So just for orientation over here on the port side, and over here we have the starboard side. That is the owner's suite and we'll check that out in a second. But first, let's go into cabin number three. As you can see, we do have single in here, but you can move these two singles together uh, so it can be made to function like a double cabin as well. So yeah, you can just take that out, move these two beds together, but again, Big windows, the shutters up there as well, look. I'll take you into the ensuite. The shower over here on the port side. Big old shower with a rain head up there, look. And again, I'll just quickly open this door so you can see in here. There you go. Another toilet. Right, let's shut that and I'll take you into the owner's cabin, do a 180. The other thing to mention as well is, again, it might just look like you've got mirrors on that bulkhead and nothing else, but behind there is a TV. So yeah, it's a feature I really like. I love these hidden TVs that are put behind mirrors. I think it's a really nice touch. But here we go into the owner's suite. Again, on that bulkhead, you've got a TV behind that mirror and lots of seating in here as well so that runs all the way along there look so you can sit on there or lay on there think about where you're going to go on your next trip huge bed of course you can walk around both sides of the bed and again another really nice light feature there and you've got your USB-C connections as well as your other power points in there as well and again the shutters can close within a couple of seconds to make this area completely dark. Another really nice light feature over there. And here we have the walk-in wardrobe. Nice, decent sized walk-in wardrobe there, look. Life jacket over there. That plenty of space in here to keep all of your stuff. When I was talking to the chief engineer when he was taking me around earlier on, he was saying that pretty much this is used as a day boat rather than for long distance uh, cruising. So yeah, at the moment, the way that it's used by the owner is for you know the weekend day boat kind of configuration. But here we have the ensuite, big old sink there recessed into the cabinetry, another porthole up there, look. And of course, you have the toilet through here and another porthole up there.
and a huge shower again with a nice big rain head up there and a detachable handheld as well but yeah really really nicely laid out and plenty of space uh, this is a really voluminous boat and you can tell as we walk around the space the utilization of space on board uh, is really really good really impressive uh, i know that it isn't actually used as a long range long distance cruising vessel but i'll be quite happy to spend a considerable amount of time on here okay let's head aft take you back out into this area this lounging area here look once again have a quick look around I think that is probably where I would be sat. All right, let's head up these five steps. Turn around, face forward, and take you up into this area here. So over on the port side, more seating, and check out the size of that window, absolutely massive. And again, look, somewhere you can come and lay, you can imagine laying there whilst you're on the way, checking out that view, thanks to the huge window, which of course you've got over on the starboard side as well. More seating area over here. Again, a great place to sit down, have a chat with a coffee, work out where you're going to go, what you're going to be doing. Big TV over on that bulkhead over there. And as we move forward, here we find a more formal dining area. But check out the opening on the starboard side, which again you've got over on the pool side as well. Absolutely massive windows. That at the moment is obviously opened up. You can imagine being at anchor and the view you get when you're sat here having a meal. And look, if I look aft, you can see that kind of split level setup. The view you get as you look around on this level is very, very unique. I've not been on the boat like this before, uh, but I can imagine you feel really connected to your seascape on here when you are at anchor or while you are underway. And of course over here on the port side we do have a day head. If I move forward, I have a galley on the starboard side. And look, if I just show you up here, loads of appliances obviously, digital control for the climate control over there. And here we have the galley. So induction hob, melee cooker, big old sink over here as well. Another melee appliance over here. And look, loads of counter space. So one of the things that I like about this galley as well is when you're in here cooking up a meal, that is the view that you get. So of course you've got the bridge just on the other side of that bulkhead. But if you are underway at night and you need the bridge to be blacked out, and you can switch this button over here on the bulkhead to turn that into privacy glass, just like that. So yeah, there we go. So you can pilot the boat underway at night and you don't have to worry about any light pollution coming in from the galley. But yeah, really decent sized galley. Let's move out of here and I'll take you into the bridge. So we take one step up First thing I noticed about this bridge when I came in here is the size of the centerpiece glass there. Look at that, completely uninterrupted. Uh, there is a privacy screen up there at the moment, so when the owner and his guests are on the bow, you can put this privacy screen up, of course, when you're alongside or at anchor, just for some additional privacy if you are in here, working out your next route, where you're gonna go. Of course, seating area over here on the starboard side. And up here, another VHF radio, another multifunction display there as well. And spin around and I'll show you the controls on the helm. Here we have the bow thruster, throttle control levers for the engines, uh, dynamic positioning system control stick just here. MAN engine displays, digital displays there as well, and two huge multi-function displays there as well. And of course, the ship's wheel and the captain's seat there. But yeah, really, really impressive visibility out here in terms of the forward sector of the boat. 
mainly thanks to that huge window there look but what I might do before I take you out on the upper deck I might just quickly take you down into the crew accommodation give you a quick look around here obviously I'm not going to open up anything because the crew are on board so then we have the captain's cabin over there on the port side I won't go in there but look you can see on the bulkhead you've got the various multifunction displays on the bulkhead so you can pretty much keep connected with everything that's going on with the boat washer dryer over there and move forwards and look there we go crew accommodation right let's spin around do a 180 head back up the steps and i'll take you out onto the upper deck so you can have a look around there through this pantograph door over here on the port side out onto the wide side decks so big sturdy bulwarks there and as you can see at the moment we have the awning up which is probably how i'd prefer it keep out that midday sun but yeah check out this area for lounging relaxing surrounded by your favorite people now these two tables they can be lowered as well so you can put some additional sun pads on there if you wanted to but look if i show you the view aft again look you can't see anything into the bridge there so that privacy screen really doing a good job and let's spin around and show you some more sun pads here look and of course the anchor and the ground tackle stowed away under there and you might have noticed on the uh, stern as well you have some speakers that are retractable they lower into the deck so they're not being used they're hidden away but yeah check out a very warm and very sunny can give you a quick pan around look okay all right let's spin back around again i'll give you a quick look at the equipment as you can see up there we've got the fleur and just in front of the fleur we have the radar if i lift it up a bit more you'll see the amount of solar panels that you get up there of course the two ssb aerials on the port and starboard side as well in fact if i head aft along the port side deck i'll quickly take you up there so you can see the view before we head into the engine room and what I'm going to do for this short tour, I'm actually going to go into the engine room with the chief engineer, because who better? Yay. And there he is. There you are. We'll be catching up yep. in a couple of minutes. We'll go down the engine room. We certainly shall. And get the professionals to talk about the engine room Ooh. rather than me. <laughs> right, let's head up these steps. Ah, there we go. Again, look, loads of sun pads up here. Plenty of space to sit and relax, enjoy the sun. Obviously you've got a dome there on the starboard side, another one over there on the port side, but check out that view. And of course here you can see all the solar panels, loads of solar panels. And if you're wondering about the helm station, the helm station's actually over here on the starboard side. And again, the chief engineer did open this up for me. If I try and, ah, oh, there we go. So look, buttons over there on the starboard side, right next to the VHF radio press that and up flips the helm station again over here on the starboard side joystick for the dynamic positioning system bow thruster control there a large multi-function display let's just close that back up so i'm guessing we just press the close button and there we go down she goes very james bond like Right, okay, let's take you into the engine room. I'm gonna meet you down there and we'll pick up the engineer and he can give us the detailed tour. Hi guys, we are in for a real treat. Here is Alex, he's the chief engineer. Alex, thank you for your time. Absolute pleasure. And thank you very much for taking us around the engine room. We'll yeah. follow you. I thought, I thought who better to show us around the engine room than the man himself, the chief engineer. Alex, how long have you been on board? Uh, about just over a year, year and a bit now. So just over a year and a bit? Yeah, and it's, uh, it's a very interesting boat, this one. It's got some interesting toys on it, compared that, to some of the other boats I've worked on. And that's why I thought, as soon as I saw the engine room, I thought, yeah, I'm going to need some it's additional... A, it's a cozy one. It is, there we go, look. Right, let's get in here. 
And what we do, we turn off a couple of those motors. There we, there we go. go. So you can hear what I'm saying. Right, so Alex, what is powering this absolute beast? So we've got three sets of MAN uh, V12s. Uh, with an SCR system which are on top of them, which is the catalyst reduction system. So this boat is the only boat in the SP range which is actually set up for the US. Uh, none of the SPs have this system. So this is all coded. So if it wants to go to America, it can go. It's all really, yeah. And when was that system installed? Oh, it was installed about three years ago on, uh, when it was being made. And something we were talking about earlier on when we were down here is how you managed to get these three engines out of this boat as and when you need to. So explain to them how so, you managed to do that. So what we did is we ended up cutting a massive hatch up here, lifting the hatch out and then picking each individual engine up. So all the exhaust came first, then the SCR system came out, all the framing and then we built, uh, got a cradle and then they were all craned out individually. Wow, very that, impressive to see. That must have been a sight to oh, behold. Amazing. For an engineering perspective, it was very, very impressive. And so for people that don't know, explain to me a little bit about how the SC The SCR system, works. system, the catalytic reduction system, it's the exact same system you get on like a, a diesel car, yep. where you have to add blue. It's almost the same system. Right. So, But this is more of an, an industrial scale. Yeah. So we have the same stuff. We add, take the add blue, which we set from the normal car place, and we top it up and then we add it to the exhaust systems and what it does, it burns at a higher temperature and removes all, uh, well, massive amounts of the emissions. So in reality, it's a lot cleaner than most standard engines. And in terms of your job on board, what, what would you say is the part of your job that you enjoy the most? Uh, well, to be honest, I'm an all-rounder. I yeah. love doing everything. The thing about these size boats I enjoy, I'm doing all the engineering, I'm working outside, driving the tenders, helping manoeuvring. And I've got my yacht master as well, so I'm able to, on some stages, help the captain if oh, necessary. Wow. So, but I'm an all-rounder. I love it. You love me, getting involved with everything. I love everything. Me, I like being in the bilges, cleaning the buildings, doing the maintenance outside, scrubbing decks. This is your leads man. That's no, why. Right. Say, yachts are born and bred. Me, yeah, not messing around. And in terms of the. Um, the, the fuel efficiency of the engines, how many litres per hour do these burn? Well, what we normally do is we run these about, it, we, we look at it as it's a jet boat and we like to go fast. So we normally run these engines about 90% and we use about 300 litres per engine. Wow. But we, you know, we very, it's, it's more of a very overrated day boat because we only have a fuel capacity of 12,000 litres. 12,000 litres. Yeah, so it, we haven't got massive range on it. Yeah. But, you know, for example, if I want to go from Monaco to Saint Tropez, we can get there just over an hour. Just over an hour? Yeah. Wow. So we can we cruise about 31, 32 knots. And the top speed is? is about 36 knots. 36 knots. Yeah. And, and the burn rate per fuel at 36 knots? About 350 litres per engine. Wow, so is. you can imagine it does. It takes. Uh, it doesn't take long to uh, eat the tanks. Yeah, yeah it drains imagine. them very quickly. And from an engineering perspective, um, the maintenance of the water jets. What, what are the main tasks that you have to kind of keep on top of? Oh, like most, uh, most of the engines, most of the stuff on board are all seawater cooled. Yeah. So we have the same as all the boats. We've got sea strainers, big sea strainers at the back, and they obviously have to be cleaned on a monthly basis because with this particular boat. Normally, you get sea strainers on uh, each unit, for yeah. example, on the air conditioning, on our sea keep, on our water maker, our engines and generators. But this boat, it all goes through one manifold. So we've got two sea chests and one manifold, yeah. and then it's all split out to all the individual units. So that's the most important thing is to keep that clean, because if they fill up, you don't just lose the engines, you lose your generators, you see it, you lose all of it. So how soon, in terms of if they did get clogged up, how soon would you know about it? With the Everything, we get, yeah, you get an overheat alarm. Right. So the temperature, well, obviously, because you haven't got the coolant, to get, you haven't got the seawater keeping the coolant cold, and then the heat, the temperature will start rising and rising and rising, and then you start getting the alarms. Yeah. But I monitor them on an hourly basis. So I come down, I check everything visually, you know, I do my records, etc. So we've got some kind of idea of what's going on. And if I can see these slight changes, or if, there's slight, if it's going up, or I'll be able to see very quickly. Very quickly. And of course, so we've got three engines in here, but we've got two jets. So if you explain to the viewer how that configuration works. Well, we actually have three jets. Right. So okay. we have two maneuverable jets, which have maneuverable buckets, and yep. that is for our movement. And the center one is like an afterburner. Right. So when we go to a thousand RPM, the, set, the third one will engage and give us that extra oomph that will push us to 36 knots. And then when we drop off a thousand uh, RPM, 
this one will stop, shut down. Obviously the engine's still running, but it'll disengage. Yeah. And then we just use the two manoeuvring buckets for uh, when we're coming in. So that automatically kicks in at a thousand yeah, so a thousand reps. Thousand, yeah, yeah. As you look upstairs, you'll see when you look, so you only have the two throttles. Yeah. Right, and that is for the two engines. Right. right? So they are only for manoeuvring. But like I say, when we've got a thousand, she'll kick in and then you get that extra little bit of a fuel that must, eaten. That must be a sight to behold though, carrying through the water at 36 knots with it, those it, water jets. It's an amazing experience, especially having the open stern. Yeah. There's no barrier, so when you stop there and you've got all this bellowing water coming out, it's it's very impressive. And do you get much of a rooster tail when you're heading along, if you're kind of cruising we along? We can if you wish, but like I say, with the amount of fuel these take, when you have a, a rooster tail, it's actually drinking more fuel because it's not as efficient. So, but it is, it's even when it's on its own, without the rooster tail, it's a big amount yeah. of water. It's very impressive. Yeah. I a lot of people, when we go past, they're all staring at <laughs> Yeah, what is it? Yeah, because obviously you don't get many boats of this size doing that kind of speed. Not especially really. on water jets Not well. really. There are a couple in the area, but not as unique looking like this, because this is a very unique model. When yeah. You're looking at all your other boats in the area, and you look at this and you're like, wow. Yeah. Every, you know, it's a showstopper. It's, it's wonderful. It is. It's absolutely wonderful. And in terms of general maintenance on these engines, is that something you have to do yearly, or is it something so, you do based on hours? Uh, hours mostly, but on a yearly we do get them serviced. We'll use MAN to come in and they'll do a full service on them. Yeah. Especially, uh, but uh, it's all under warranty in the moment, so we'll do that. My job is just to keep an eye on everything. Yeah. If there's any other problems, I observe and I report. Unless it's an absolute dire issue, then I'll, you know, I'll fix it. If we get a water leak or fuel yeah. leak or stuff like that, I'll do that. And how do you cope with the uh, heat down here when you're underway and you have uh, to come look, down to your hourly checks? If you're not, if it's like a chef, if you don't like the heat, you, know, you shouldn't <laughs> be in here. So uh, no, I'm kind of used to it now. And yeah, we got the uh, we got the fans as well, haven't we? Like yeah. dotted around. We've got one behind the massive ear. extractors, and then we've got additional fans as well, which just helps move the air around the engine room. Yeah, because we obviously with this SCR system, it blocks all the uh, air. So we've got additional fans just to move the air and circulate, and uh, it's a, it's doing its job now. Which is good. So what have we got behind you? So so behind me here. We've got our water pumps, so this is providing our water system, a 220 and 110, just in case we lose our shore power. That's what it's doing now, it's just pressurising the water, yeah. if somebody's using it. It runs about four and a half bar, so as soon as it goes to four and a half bar, she shuts down. Right. And then when uh, someone uses it again, so that's dropping and kicks back in. Yeah. These are our fire pump and our bilge pump. Yeah. So obviously if there's a fire, these are our, uh, we can engage these at any particular point on the boat. We also have an emergency pump on the bow as well, but you can swap these over so you can have that as a fire or build. If, if one doesn't work, you've got a backup. Right, okay. And in terms of uh, gyro stabilization, we have, we have a sea keeper down here, wood solid sea keeper, which is an excellent piece of equipment. So we don't have stabilizer wings like most bigger boats have. We've just got this big, what well, I can describe as big sphere, and it spins at a ridiculous rate. Right? And then what it does, it counters the movement of the boats. And as soon as this engages, you instantly, the boat just goes solid. Yeah. It's impressive. They are phenomenal bits of gear. Very good. Unfortunately, it just takes 45 minutes to spool up to its maximum. But so, oh, you, so I never knew it. So if you if you want to use it, you have to kind of fire out 45 fire minutes. 45 minutes prior. Ah. And then it will spin up, spool up to its uh, its speed. And then it will, and then you can engage it. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I never so knew that's that. That's the only downside to these systems. It's not an instantaneous. But if you had stabilizer wings, you would instantly come out and then if you're using them, but this one you have to spool up. Right, okay. But it, you know, it's a very good system. It's, it's compact, you know, with the stabilized wings, you've got the wings outside and it makes it less, uh, you've got a bit of drag. Yeah. But ours is a jet boat and we don't want drag, yeah. so you can't have the wings. Which makes complete and sense. And then you've got the separate hydraulic motors or electric motors, depending on what they use. But this nice little unit sits in there. I see it's got the uh, plastic cover on it. And that's... It has. Originally it had a metal one, but we decided to put the plastic one on, so we can, the first bed one, so we can actually see what's going on. I think it's, it's a really good touch, yeah, because you can just look at it straight away and know yeah, exactly what's I going in with it. if there's any hydraulic leaks or anything like that. The other one, see, you can't really see. I think that's a, a good feature. Yeah, absolutely. And then moving over to your left-hand side, what have we got over here? So uh, over here, we've got our shore converters here. So on this, again, we can be done in this model. This is set up for the US. So with the SCR system and these shore converters, yeah. this boat can immediately go over. If you just had a standard transformer, you couldn't go for the United States, which is a completely different voltage. While these, slight, just a minor alteration with the plug, 
plug-in done. This will done dusty. Yeah, that's it. So like the other models, you'd have to get these installed, but these are about, I don't know, 250, 300 grand. Wow. Just to put these, and that's just them, and then they've got the installation costs for wiring it all into the units here. Wow. Because it's all been power supply to tell me all the generators, these all fans and pumps, etc. Uh, these are the air conditioning units down here, hidden obviously with the, the very flag in the We've got three air compressors, we've got the compressors down here, and they're doing the boats, and these just rotate through themselves. We've got two more on board, which are doing all different areas as well. Yeah. So we've got air circulation by another makeup uh, compressor there in the bilges. So, yeah, we've got four of these down there, keeping the boat nice and cool. And I know that my, my viewers will definitely want to know, it's something I always ask, especially when I'm down in the engine room. In terms of a range, what's a range at a cruising speed, roughly? So, so as I say, we, we cruise at 90%, so we go like 350 litres per engine. Yeah, uh, 300, sorry, per engine. Yeah. So you've got a lot, you know, 12,000 litres, you haven't got that far at all. Yeah. You know, that's so you just... That's the thing, isn't it? This boat yeah. is, is utilised more as a weekend yeah, kind of day boat. Longer, yeah, exactly. It's, you know, so if you want to get to one place very quickly, if you want to go to Portofino from uh, from here, you know, it just take you maybe two, three hours max. Yeah. Like Central Bay, like you say, one hour. Yeah, that's well, normal boats they cruise at like cruising speed. Normally, other boats it's like 13, 10, 13 knots. Yeah, and we just got flying past it. And what, in terms of sea states, what's the the, the, the biggest sea states that you? have Experience while you've been on board on this one, probably just over a meter. That means, uh, as with the, the problem with this boat is it's got a very shallow draft, yeah. Uh, we only have like a 1.2 meter draft, so it's very shallow. So, it does this is why if we don't have the stabilizer on, she does roll considerably, yeah. Right, like, so we normally don't really take it out in more than a half a meter, yeah, because after that, she becomes it just becomes a bit of a roly poly thing, not enjoyable, yeah. And then again, you know, then we another side of it is. To think of insurance as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like insurance is the number one thing. If you take it out in weather where it's, uh, you know, you, it's predicted to be bad, the insurance might turn around and say, right, we're not paying you because you it's, knew what the weather was going to be like. Yeah. You shouldn't have gone out. So, and yeah. obviously, we think of our own safety and yeah. customer safety. So, no, and absolutely, we do. That makes perfect sense. And then over here, so these are the fuel filters. So, this is your primary wrap bar filters. Right, this is there, and then you've got so your main filters back there, which are the ones, but these are your rack hole. All these are, yeah, these are like separates, so if there's any water inside, it actually separates it. So, do you get an alarm when they need to be changed? Or you, you just, yeah, no, it's an alarm down here, these connected to sensors. But on, on my monthly, usually, there's like a little thing at the bottom, and I just open it just to see if there's any water in there. Right, right okay. it's part of the maintenance. Get on all these rack hole filters, normally the glass. So, if you look at other models, it'll have to be glass, yeah, and you can actually see. Metal ones. Is there any reason why they're metal and not glass? No, probably to do with the heat, I imagine. Right, okay. Because I say this engine room does get very warm because, as you can see, there's the three engines, you know, three sets yeah. of V12s, and you can imagine the amount of heat that these produce, right? And these are uh, the SAR systems, they, they produce a lot because they're obviously big exhausts, right? And they have to be kept to a good temperature to remove all the emissions, so it does get very warm. Yeah, so I can everything imagine. has to withstand. This is why everything's all fireproofed and you know, everything back here all has to be able to take the heat. Fantastic. Well, should we go and have a look at the water maker? I know there's something else that yeah, so we often have, piques people's curiosity yeah, we as well. Have two palms of uh, in some respects the water purification. So we've got this is the uh, water maker. She produces about 110 litres an hour, and this comes from direct uh, seawater and uses a system called reverse osmosis. And what it uses is it takes the seawater and puts it through high pressure membranes. And then it separates all the salt and everything, and then releases the fresh water. Yeah. Right. Uh, and you know this one. It's a very so when you're uh, under anchor and you need to get some water, we can stick this on, and it'll start refilling the tank. This one here is a pure machine, and this is also reverse osmosis, but this uses fresh water. So when we're connected to the shore side, what it does, it removes all the elements, the calcium, everything. Which is handy for when you're washing down the deck, right? When you're washing the, uh, it's like when you spray onto a window, there's nothing. There's yeah. no calcium, there's absolutely no salt, anything, it just, just rolls off. And you don't have to add anything to the drinking water either? You don't have to no, add any no, minerals. no, as we're day by, we actually rotate the tanks very quickly. We only hold about 1,500 litres of water, so you can imagine like having 10 people, 15 yeah. people on board using the toilets and dishwasher. 
it goes down very quickly so the water's completely regenerated all the time so there's no stagnant water i do you know with sort of bigger models you do have like a copper and a silver input but it's not necessary on this one i know something else that will probably be asked as well about the solar capacity earlier on in the uh the boat tour i was showing the solar panels yes. obviously so how much solar energy are you getting out of those on a typical day a sunny day um sunny day? Whoa, maybe about, I, I can't remember if I think about 28 kilowatts or something like that. But okay. it's really, it, it varies. It's really there just to kind of like charge the service batteries. Yeah. That's all it is. It's a, it's a good system, but you can't run the boats uh, all night or something like that. It's yeah. just there to, you know, it's like a secondary charging system. We do have lithium on board, so we have a full lithium packs, and we can actually run the boat, you know, at night. Uh, if we fancy, for example, the owners want a nice and quiet sleep, we can turn our generators off and then stick the lithium on and the boat will just sit there on the lithium and we can run it for about a day. Is that with uh, all the guests on board as well? Yes, yes, oh, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. The lithium packs are huge, very big capacity. Yeah, and they're um, obviously separate from the engine room for safety Yeah, I reasons. can show you there, look, in the, actually just underneath here, we can walk around and Oh yeah, let's have a look, yeah. Let's come back up here and we've got the firefighting yeah, cylinders okay. there yeah fm200 system is that gas or that's gas it right? is, Not yes. fine. no it's gas and then this is under here underneath here and this one you've got port starboard you've got all this lithium so all underneath here is big lithium system which is all fully automated yeah you've got uh, you've got a full suppression system it's ventilated cooled so it's a very safe system if the temperature changes anywhere the alarms will kick in and if the, it feels like there's a problem, this suppression system will kick in automatically. So with the amount of weight that you've got on the stern, do you have ballast up forward to counter so that? So, no, everything is really sat in the middle. So uh, from this point here, we've got the fuel tank, which is direct here, yeah. the main fuel tank. We've got the fresh water tank, which is underneath there. And then we've got two small tanks on either side, one for black and one for grey, which is under the bilge. Uh -huh. But everything is more central. Right, okay. And how big is the freshwater tank on here? The freshwater is 1,500 litres. 1,500. And then the black is 200 and the grey is about 600. Right. So okay. it's very, very small tanks. But I say this boat is really for day. Yeah. You know, we come back, we get to come, just come pump it out or we get to shore side and then yeah. we pump it out that way. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and that's it really. Well, Alex, look, thanks for showing us around. Pleasure. I thought who better to show us around <laughs> the engine room yeah, than the special. professional rather than the YouTuber. That's so. it, and a daft Yorkshireman as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alex, thanks a lot. Absolute pleasure. So thanks for joining me aboard this beautiful San Lorenzo. I'd like to say a massive thank you to West Nautical for arranging this boat tour. I really appreciate it. At the time of making and uploading this video to my YouTube channel, this boat is currently listed for sale. If you'd like to find out more information, then I'll leave a link in the video description. And also I'd like to say a big thank you to Alex, the chief engineer as well, uh, for giving us his time as we had a look around the engine room. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that part of the video, but I thought who better to show you around the engine room than the engineer himself. So a big thanks to everybody on board, the crew for letting me film uh, during a busy boat show. Uh, if you haven't already, please don't forget to give the video a like. Please don't forget also to subscribe to my channel. I've got some fantastic videos coming up soon. So until next time, fair winds and following seas. Before you go, please don't forget to sign up for my free newsletter. I'll leave a link pinned in the comments.